Los Angeles is home to millions of people looking for a healthier lifestyle. Well, look no more. Your World Today is here and is a show offering you a wide array of topics to improve your quality of life. From a healthier living to making smarter decisions. Welcome to Your World Today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your World Today. My name is Ophelia La Torre. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm even happier to be working alongside this handsome fellow. How are you? I'm good. I'm Kerrigan Von Poy, and I'm excited to be a part of this great show that's going to teach our community a lot of really important health lessons. Yes, we want you to watch the show and leave having learned something that's going to better your life, your health, your, your fitness level, your cooking skills. Do you do much cooking? I, I do a little bit, but I hope to learn more from the show. Absolutely. So why don't we go to our first guest. He's a doctor from White Memorial Medical Center. His name is Miguel Salazar, and he is a cardiac electrophysiologist at White Memorial. That's a tongue twister. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> doctor. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome. I'm Good to see you. Yes. Hello, doctor. Hi, hello. How are you? Have a seat. Thank you. So, our first question is atrial fibrillation. What is that, doctor? Well, that's a great question, actually, because atrial fibrillation happens to be the most frequent arrhythmia in the United States. And it's a problem because atrial fibrillation can lead to significant morbidity and mortality. So we definitely need to learn more about this rhythm or educate our patients about this rhythm. Doctor, how frequently do you see patients come in with this uh, condition? Very frequent. Um, as, as you uh, pointed out, I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist, so patients tend to be referred to me for the treatment, for specialized treatment of atrial fibrillation. Now, atrial fibrillation, uh, it's, it's, it's a rhythm that is growing in, in prevalence. Uh, currently, we have about 4 million patients in the United States with this rhythm, and we expect to have about 15 million patients by the year 2050. So it's definitely an epidemic, is, is what we're labeling it. Doctor, before we go into the very interesting and important uh, questions about how we get it and how we prevent it, uh, what does it feel like? That's a very, very good question. So uh, to understand a little bit more about atrial fibrillation, let's just briefly go over how the, the, the heart works or, or a normal heartbeat works. So the heart has four chambers, uh, two top chambers called the atria and two bottom chambers called the ventricles. So signals originate usually in the top right-hand corner of the right atrium, and they travel across the top chambers to the bottom chambers, and then the bottom chambers squeeze blood to the rest of the body. That's how every single heartbeat wa uh, works. When you're in atrial fibrillation, you lose that. There's really no coordinated rhythm from the top chambers being transmitted to the bottom chambers. It's very irregular. Mm -hmm. And rather than beating at 60 beats per minute, for example, at rest, the top chambers are going at 300 to 400 beats per minute. So the bottom chambers, or your pulse, the way people feel it sometimes, is as a very fast irregular rhythm. So that's one, one aspect, one possibility. The other possibility, unfortunately, is that patients may be completely asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms or very, very subtle symptoms. So doctor, this, this irregular heartbeat, is that arrhythmia? You hear that term very often. Is yes. that what we would describe <coughs> as arrhythmia? Arrhythmia is an umbrella term, okay. and atrial fibrillation is the specific rhythm abnormality describing it, yes. What other medical conditions can cause AFib? Well, um, AFib um, is, uh, there is a, 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 there are really no medical conditions that can cause AFib, let's say, but the atrial fibrillation can be exacerbated by other conditions, mm -hmm. and uh, including high blood pressure, diabetes, coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease, and age is also a factor in, in, in all of this. Of course. So, <laughs> yes. So um, starting the age of 50 in the average uh, person, of course. Uh, the top chambers start, start to become more fibrotic. Mm. As they become more fibrotic, they tend to conduct electricity in a, in a more erratic pattern. So, so the more erratic patterns of conduction, the more chances you have of having atrial fibrillation. So if you 
look at the population uh, in their 60s, let's say, about 4 to 5 percent of them have this rhythm. If you look at the population in their 80s, about 10 percent of them have this rhythm. So it's also an age-driven issue or problem. Doctor, if someone's not feeling well and they think, oh, I, I may be just under the weather and I can just let it go away and it'll go away naturally, is that the case with AFib? No, unfortunately it's not the case with atrial fibrillation. So one of the best things or the, the, the one thing that you can do at home, let's say, if you feel um, um, fatigued or you just feel different and you think that maybe your heart has something to do with it, is to take your pulse. And there are two areas where you can readily take your pulse and easily take your pulse. One area is in the radial artery right here. So if you feel your pulse right now, you will notice, hopefully, that your pulse is regular. You know, so there is a regular pattern to it. So if you feel an irregular pulse, you probably have atrial fibrillation and you should definitely check in with your doctor. Um, the other place is right here in the carotid artery. So those are two places where you can feel your pulse and that can clue you in as to whether you have atrial fibrillation. Um, uh, so going back to um, uh, the symptoms though, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. some people don't have symptoms. And where you're in atrial fibrillation, the top chambers are not actively squeezing blood. Blood still flowing because right. there's a pressure difference between the top and the bottom chamber, but humans have an accessory uh, um, uh, element to the left mm -hmm. atrial uh, uh, chamber called the left atrial appendage. So that's where when you're in AFib, blood tends to pool and become stagnant. And when that happens, you can form a clot. That clot can then dislodge and go to the left ventricle and then out into the systemic circulation. Right. Now the first exit off of that highway of blood is to the brain. So this is how atrial fibrillation leads to a stroke. Atrial fibrillation is the leading cause of embolic strokes. Now is AFib life-threatening, doctor? In because a way, as you're saying, it's yes. very, very tricky. In a way it is because once you have a stroke from atrial fibrillation, if you compare the mortality, the 30-day mortality and the one-year mortality of the strokes caused by atrial fibrillation, they're double. So 34% as opposed to 16%, they double uh, the, the chance of mortality as, as compared to the strokes caused by something else other than atrial fibrillation. Right. Well, doctor, we're going to continue talking uh, with you, uh, uh, having this conversation, what causes it, how we can prevent it. Absolutely. When we come back uh, from a short break, but we're also going to be talking to our financial experts. So uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.